Once upon a time in the serene landscapes of ancient India, there lived a wise and compassionate sage named Gautama Buddha. People from far and wide traveled to seek his wisdom, for he was known not only for his deep insights, but also for his profound understanding of human suffering. Among the many seekers who came to him, there was a young man named Nalan, who was deeply troubled by a question that seemed to haunt him day and night. Nalan had witnessed a series of misfortunes befalling his loved ones, all of whom were kind-hearted and virtuous individuals. His mother, who had dedicated her life to helping the poor, had fallen gravely ill. His closest friend, a gentle and honest merchant, had lost all his possessions to a band of ruthless thieves. Nalan himself, though always striving to do good, faced constant obstacles and hardships. Confused and heartbroken, he turned to the Buddha for answers. One evening, as the sun began to set over the tranquil waters of the Ganges, Nalan approached the Buddha, who was sitting under the Bodhi tree in meditation. With a respectful bow, Nalan voiced his tormenting question. Venerable sir, why do bad things happen only to good people? Why do those who live righteously and with compassion seem to suffer the most, while those who commit evil deeds often prosper? The Buddha opened his eyes, his gaze serene and filled with compassion. He motioned for Nalan to sit beside him and began to speak in a calm and gentle voice. Nalan, your question is one that has troubled many hearts. To understand the nature of suffering, we must first understand the nature of existence and the law of karma. He paused, allowing his words to sink in before continuing. In this vast tapestry of life, every action, every thought, and every intention creates ripples that extend far beyond our immediate perception. This is the law of karma. It is not a punishment or reward system, but a natural law of cause and effect. The suffering we see in this life may not be a direct consequence of actions from this life alone, but could be the result of deeds from past existences. Seeing the puzzled look on Nalan's face, the Buddha decided to share a story to illustrate his point. Many eons ago, there was a kingdom ruled by a just and benevolent king named Sudharma. King Sudharma was known for his fairness and generosity. However, despite his virtuous nature, he faced many challenges. His kingdom was often plagued by droughts, and his people suffered. One day, the king decided to seek answers from a wise hermit who lived in the mountains. The hermit, upon hearing the king's woes, smiled and said, Your Majesty, the challenges you face are not because of your current actions, but are the consequences of a life long ago. In that life, you were a powerful and wealthy merchant. Though you were generous, you also harbored pride and looked down upon those less fortunate. Your arrogance created negative karma that has now come to fruition. King Sudharma, humbled by this revelation, asked how he could alleviate the suffering of his people. The hermit advised him to continue his righteous deeds and to cultivate humility and compassion. Over time, the king's actions began to generate positive karma, and eventually, the kingdom flourished again. The Buddha looked at Nalan and said, Just like King Sudharma, the suffering you see in good people may be the result of past actions, but it is also an opportunity for growth and purification. Suffering can be a powerful teacher, guiding us towards greater compassion, wisdom, and inner strength. Nalan listened intently, absorbing the profound wisdom of the Buddha's words. Yet, his heart still yearned for a more personal understanding. But Master, he asked, what can we do in the face of such suffering? How can we help those we love who are enduring pain and hardship? The Buddha smiled kindly and replied, Nalan, the path to alleviating suffering begins with understanding and compassion. When you encounter suffering, whether in yourself or others, do not turn away. Embrace it with an open heart and mind. 
Offer your love and support to those who suffer. Help them see that their pain is not a punishment, but a part of their journey towards enlightenment. He continued, Moreover, remember that each person's path is unique. Some may find solace in meditation, others in acts of kindness, and still others in the pursuit of knowledge. Encourage those who suffer to find their own way to inner peace. And most importantly, cultivate your own practice of mindfulness and compassion. By doing so, you create a ripple effect that can touch the lives of many. As Nalan began to grasp the concept of karma, he asked another question that had been troubling him. Master, if karma dictates the experiences we have in this life, why do we see people who commit evil deeds prosper and live comfortably? How is this just? The Buddha's expression remained serene as he explained, Nalan, the law of karma is vast and intricate, spanning many lifetimes. The prosperity you see in those who commit evil deeds is often the result of past positive actions coming to fruition. Just as suffering can be delayed, so can the consequences of harmful actions. Their current prosperity is temporary and will eventually give way to the results of their negative deeds. The Buddha told another story. In a village not far from here, there once lived a cunning and deceitful man named Jitendra. He amassed great wealth through dishonest means, cheating and exploiting others. His luxurious lifestyle seemed to defy justice, and many wondered why he did not face the consequences of his actions. However, what they did not see was the restlessness and fear that plagued Jitendra's mind. He was constantly anxious, fearing retribution for his misdeeds. In his next life, Jitendra was born into poverty and hardship, where he had to atone for the suffering he had caused others. The Buddha concluded, karma is impartial and inevitable. Those who commit evil deeds may enjoy temporary prosperity, but they cannot escape the eventual consequences of their actions. Similarly, those who suffer despite their goodness are working through the results of past actions and creating positive karma for their future. Nalan felt a sense of clarity and peace wash over him. He realized that while he might not have all the answers, he could be a source of comfort and support for those around him. With a grateful heart, he bowed to the Buddha and resolved to walk the path of compassion and understanding. In the years that followed, Nalan became known for his unwavering kindness and wisdom. He dedicated his life to helping others, often sharing the Buddha's teachings with those in need. Through his actions, he came to understand that suffering, while inevitable, could be transformed into a source of strength and enlightenment. One day, a woman named Kavita came to Nalan, burdened by the sorrow of losing her child to illness. She cried, Why did this happen to my innocent child? We did no wrong. Why do the good suffer so much? Nalan gently took her hand and shared the Buddha's teachings. Kavita, suffering does not discriminate. It is a part of the human experience that can arise from many sources, including past actions, natural laws, and even the choices we make. Your child's suffering was not a punishment, but part of a greater journey. In this life or the next, the seeds of love and compassion you sow will bear fruit. Kavita listened, and though her pain remained, she found a measure of peace in understanding the broader picture. She began to devote herself to helping other grieving parents, turning her suffering into a beacon of hope for others. And so, the story of Nalan and the Buddha's teaching spread far and wide, reminding all who heard it that even in the face of adversity, there was a path to understanding, growth, and ultimately, enlightenment. Thank you for watching our video. We hope you found it enlightening and inspiring. If you enjoyed the content, please subscribe to the Enlightenment Hub for more wisdom and insights. Join our community and stay connected on your journey to enlightenment. Namaste.